do you test the viewports of your responsive layouts? Do you grab the edge of your browser and flick it around wildly? Do you waste time hunting that perfect pixel that changes the layout from mobile to tablet and back again? For storybook users, there's a better way. So stop resizing your browser and start using storybook viewports. Hey, I'm Tantastic, a storybook engineer, and I'm here to help you become a storybook pro. If you'd like to level up your UI engineering game, just subscribe for more content and lessons from me. Storybook Viewport makes it easy to see your stories in different dimensions with a click of a button. Today, I'll show you how to add devices from the Storybook library, add custom devices of your own, disable Storybook Viewport, and set a default viewport. Let's start with configuration. If you've never configured Storybook Viewport before, there are three viewports that will show up by default. Let's replace these sample viewports with devices from the Storybook Viewport library. Open the preview configuration file in the .storybook directory. Import initial viewports from the at storybook add-on viewport package. This is a small library of viewports that come with Storybook. Add a viewport field to the configuration object. Then add a viewports property. Now assign initial viewports to that viewports property. Go back to Storybook and see all of the devices from the Storybook library. In addition to adding stories from Storybook's viewport library, we can add custom definitions of our own. Let's add a TV. Create a new object named My Viewports. Add a unique property for the viewport you'd like to define. And inside of an object, assign two required properties, name and styles. The name property is a string, so here we can be more specific using spaces and special characters. This string is what shows up inside of the viewport UI dropdown. Styles is an object that requires two properties, a width and a height. Let's define the height as 1080 pixels and the width as 1900 pixels. Now swap out the initial viewports that come from our storybook viewport library and change that to my viewport. Save that and see our new custom viewport inside of the viewport tool. Not all stories require use of the viewport tool. For these stories, we can disable the viewport tool completely. Find a component story file that you'd like to disable viewport on. I'll use button. Here in the default export, we wanna add a parameters property. Defining parameters for this component story will override anything in our global preview configuration. So we add a viewport property and add the property disable true. In Storybook, we'll notice a couple things. First, viewport is still available on our page component. But when we navigate to our button components, we see that viewport is no longer in the toolbar. This feature of Storybook where we can define global parameters and then append or overwrite them at the component or story level is called parameter inheritance. That is a video all on its own, but I will include a link to documentation in the description below. There's just one last feature to cover and that's default viewport. In our code, we'll open the header stories file, add a parameters object, add the viewport property, and inside of the key default viewport. To set a default viewport, we need to use the property name that we defined in our viewport object. So go back to your viewport definition file, wherever that is, and you'll use the property name, not the string name. Back in our story, we'll use F H D. Storybook automatically updates and we see that this component is being presented in the full HD 1080p viewport. And because we've defined this on a story level, the sibling stories are left untouched. Let's go over to the sidebar and select the logged out header. It defaults to the responsive full canvas viewport. So what do we do if we wanna set a default viewport for all of the stories in this component? Go back into our code, select these viewport overrides and move them up into our parameters object in the default export. And now all of the stories in this component story file will default to using our custom viewport. So that's it for today. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comments below. Or better yet, join our Discord server with over 14,000 amazing storybook users. If you like this video, I bet you'll love my last video where I show you how to use measure and outline tools to debug CSS layouts at the speed of light. It should be right here. As always, you can find links to anything that is linkable from this video in the description below. 
I'm Shantastic. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.